All right, as we try to end 2019, we're gonna have to leave some clowns behind. That includes the lady lacking logic. Now this person has had this coming for, I think a, a while, <laughs> but I wanted to put it off because it's kind of hard to explain the genesis of this. You see, I never intended on her having a edited separate video by itself, but she was a very unique character who I think can be a good example of a lot of behaviors that people should avoid, uh, regardless of their gender, in terms of who we affiliate ourselves with. Now, to give you some background context, she and I first met in either September or October of 2018. And I had responded to a comment she had made on Twitter. Now, because Twitter deleted my account for being anti-war, I'm sorry, they didn't, they didn't give me a reason, it just got rid of it. Um, I no longer have the archive of either that initial message or the ones we exchanged for about a month after that in the DMs. Like, I do have, I will note, um, access to her messages, so the ones that she wrote me, but that that still isn't the full conversation. And it would be very disingenuous for me to just say, she wrote this. And then you might ask yourself, well, what did you write? So that for that reason, I'm not going to show that. But what I will say is that after speaking for a month by DM for what was what I believe was an enjoyable period, she decided that I was worthy enough of giving her email. And I made a joke, oh, you're not going to give me your phone number. <laughs> and then she said that she wasn't messing with me and then gave it to me. And we had a call, I think, within a week of me getting her number. Um, this was a decent conversation. It was mostly about current events. And it wasn't that long. So I asked for a second one. And this is where we start getting into the stupidity. That's, <laughs> that's when that begins. Because what I thought was really interesting, as I recall, the period before she became privy to any of my romantic misgivings was that she was actually somewhat pleasurable to speak to. If you just talked about the news or uh, political stuff or just, you know, anything that wasn't having to do with attempting to speak like some sort of ominous uh, prick, <laughs> it was, it was decent. So, the way we the beginning of the downfall starts with her sending me a message and she says i just want to let you know i'm no longer looking i'm not looking for anything romantic being seven years into something pretty evidently stating that she is with another person and um i'm kind of weirded out by this because I never, and she admits to this, I never said anything to make her think that this was part of my secret plan to get her to, to like me and all that trash. And sure enough, when we have our second call, she admits this. Uh, but this is followed by a long, big chunk essay paragraph series between the two of us in regards to the romance stuff. And during this conversation, she says several things that are very uh, annoying to be, you know, from my perspective. And it, it has a lot to do with the fact that oftentimes when I discuss the romance issue, I never try to make it seem as if I can chart out someone else's life. So when people say, when I've had a couple of people come on here and ask, oh, should I still bother approaching? I simply say, I don't think it's worth it, but I never pretend as if someone will have the same misfortune as me because I have a way of predicting that. Um, you know, I make my predictions about the continued lack of success based on the events of the past uh, multiple years. So to have some broad who at that point had never met me um, start writing me weird things about this woman that will come around and you're only uh, 20 and it's it's blasphemy to complain about a stagnant love life after you've just been given multiple examples of people doing the same thing, no matter how old I was, no matter what year it was, uh, was really condescending. And I actually later confronted her about this after uh, our second phone call, which 
was her continuing the same nonsense where she wanted to be heard, but didn't actually listen to what I was saying, which uh, almost caused me to stop speaking to her again without me telling her any of this, because, you know, she already demonstrated she had no ability to actually listen to someone else's opinion or position. So we had another call after this, uh, which was kind of a mixture of the, it wasn't as bad, but nothing special, but the, there was a text message exchange that has one piece in there that caused me to make this uh, documentary. <laughs> and would you like to know what that was? Well, when me and her were speaking and I was talking about all kinds of things and in particular discussing how uh, she had annoyed me, uh, she asked how I'm, how I'm not being nice. We've talked for like five hours this week. This is counting the second and third calls that we had, by the way. Not now, but on both of those occasions, what provoked your rage? She responds with rage with a question mark, then rage for saying, hey, just for the record, I'm in a long-term relationship. This is notable because I ended up speaking to her for technically seven more months. And not a single time before November or after November did she ever mention anything about a guy, a man, a boyfriend, a husband, a sex buddy. (laughs) You know, what I'm saying here is that in retrospect, when I think of, because remember her line was, I'm seven years into something. That's ambiguous enough to where you can think maybe it's not a boyfriend. It's just some guy that she, uh, I don't know, likes and has an on and off thing with. And this is one of the off periods, but this was her one confirmation throughout our entire exchange that she was with another person and not in any of the months of this year or any of the months before November of 2018 or after that month, did she mention this guy at all? And this is a person who told me about her parents, about her sibling, about other miscellaneous relatives. My point in bringing this up is that if this person exist, existed, it's very unfeasible for me to believe that he would have only gotten uh, one, technically two brief mentions in the span of two weeks in this 10 month uh, situationship we had and then never be mentioned again, but co- you know, coincidentally during the same period, be such a loving partner. And just to give you a little bit of a preview past the curtains, because when we get to how this interaction ended, this will be significant. Um, this is a person who was very upset that I chose to end our communication and tried to speak to me after I blocked their number through email, uh, after getting blocked on Twitter. And I can't imagine a a woman who is with a steady boyfriend doing all of those things to talk to a guy that she has never been with. So my, my verdict, it's just my opinion. She either was lying about being with someone to dissuade me from speaking to her uh, romantically or attempting to do that at all. Or she is the worst girlfriend in you in modern U.S. history. There, that there's only two options. But yeah, um, getting back to this interaction we had. So at some time between November and December, she doesn't respond as much, and you know she sends me this cryptic message about this is the beginning of the end. So I I get kind of annoyed because. I don't understand what that's supposed to mean, but she disappears for about a week or two. And I say, you know what? At the time I'm th- making what is supposed to be my last romance video. Obviously I didn't, that didn't pan out the way it was supposed to, but it was the, uh, the screenshot one, the proof romance, the scam uh, upload. So I said, if she contacts me before, I think it was the 12th, I'm going to not include my messages with her in this. If she doesn't contact me before the 12th, I'm going to put the messages in there. So she didn't contact me in that period. I put the messages in there during our interaction. She never found out about us because she doesn't actually watch any of my stuff, except for like, I think one video. So 
you know, it, it didn't matter um, in the long run. But I want to also make sure we have our dates correct. She stopped speaking to me in early December. Now, I sent her a message in early January about a paragraph long, uh, basically, you know, me saying screw you without using any profanity and without calling her out of her name. But I accuse her of using me to get information about men who have romance problems and then, you know, throwing me away. Now, when me and her start speaking uh, via call later in January, she claims that the reason it took her so long to get back to me was because of this, this email. But again, there she stopped speaking to me in early December and didn't continue speaking to me, didn't get this email rather until early January. Basically by the point I sent that, a full month had already passed. So do, do you see where it, I don't really believe that that's actually what happened. I think what it is is that she just wasn't interested in speaking to me anymore. And then when she, or forgot or something, you know, if we're gonna, if we're gonna be generous and not impugn her motives. And then when she got the email, she had an excuse to get pissed off slash, uh, you know, go at it from the angle of, I can't believe you would talk to me in such a way. Now in the month of January, shortly after me and her continue speaking to each other there, we, we get into the dumb person I've known all my life gets knocked up. So we've, we've, you've heard about this person. I've mentioned them multiple times. I've talked about how stupid they are, um, you know, throughout the year. And again, this is someone I've known my entire life. This is someone I know is, um, poor and just, you know, is not in the best position to have a child. It's just, it, it's very, there, there's no debate for that. So when I mentioned this, when her and I are speaking, um, she starts to defend this person. And this, this begins a trend where she takes the opposing viewpoint of whatever minds is and tries to have a debate over it or like a tit for tat kind of thing. And I, it's, it's a really weird way of talking to someone because I understand there are people who uh, don't agree with my views on, on politics. That's very obvious. But what I've found out is that a lot of them generally, especially if they're um, a man, for example, subscribe to the view that the chicks have gotten ridiculous with the uh, high expectation bar or whatever. My point is it's very hard to, like the more stuff someone disagrees with you on, it becomes less uh, reasonable, let's put it that way. And, you know, she went through all the excuses. This person had a tough life. Uh, she might have some mental illness. Well, I was like, but no, no mental illness is going to make you open your legs to some guy and make your already difficult life more difficult by choice. You, and I even I even had this sentence when I spoke to her. I said, you can't control who your parents are, what economic situation you're born into, but you can be damn sure you can control if you bring someone else into the same circumstance via becoming a parent. Unless you were raped, you can control that. And, you know, it was just, um, it was really obnoxious to have her sit there and defend them. And I, I even... Um, made the claim that she was only doing this because the person's one, because look, if I'm a, if she was, let's say talking to me, right. And I said, uh, lady lack and logic. I just had a, I'm, I, my, my girlfriend is knocked up and we, we can't afford, um, uh, you know, we're, we're poor, but you know, sh uh, we're, I, I had to do this because I was, uh, I had a hard time and I was poor and, you know, um, I didn't know the difference between right and wrong. And I was too stupid to know that, if I have kids, I can't afford, that's going to destroy, that's going to hurt me and them. And we're going to just, you know, go down crashing together unless a bunch of people swoop in and save the day. I guarantee you, if I had told her that I was doing this, she would have thought I was an idiot and she'd be right to think that. But this is why I said that when people have uh, vaginas, they can get away with a lot of things that don't make sense to any reasonable person, but people suspend reality to make that person who, uh, does the really ridiculous things seem like they have some common sense in doing it, or at least try to make what they 
do not seem as horrible. I, I had one person who told me I was going to hell and, you know, and talked about how that person would end up on welfare with that kid, embrace the kid and hug it and, you know, do all. And I thought to myself, I'm going to hell for using the term church crap, but the broad who knowingly had a kid she couldn't afford isn't okay. But look, um, that happens. We have a couple more months of, uh, of speaking and there's really nothing special that happens during that period. It's just, you know, more of the, the same old, same old romance, this romance, that. Um, I will say that the, the biggest event between, and I guess th this is why I decided to do this, because when I spoke about her in the Proof Romance is a Scam upload, that was after only knowing her for a couple of months. Uh, that was really just, you know, she was just as broad that I spoke to for a little period. But I realized retroactively and just kind of as I thought about it over the past few months of, you know, having the relation or the uh, the interaction concluded that I knew what I was doing, which was taking a broad who I at least thought was physically attractive and basically saying, you know what? Me going up and trying to initiate something has always failed. It's never worked. So the only way that there will be any kind of romantic interest displayed is if she does it. If, if she doesn't, then it, it, it just it won't occur. So I was very surprised for that entire period. I, I either spoke to other broads, which was very rare because, like I said, I'm, I'm done approaching, or I just didn't even think of romance at all because it was – just a waste of time to me at that point. Um, but yeah, she, she never seemed to fully grasp why that thing with that person bothered me so much, you know, that I could, I could sit here and a lot of times they talk about a lack of confidence, but I think I'm intelligent. I don't think I'm ugly. And I, uh, you know, I've been told that I'm comedic and, uh, you know, other positive attributes. So when I see someone that I don't think has any of those, be able to so easily get one partner that sticks with them for years and then have a kid when they never strove for that. Whereas I had for years, it, it's tantamount to treason. And, you know, I've made the same point to her just because I don't think some woman is attractive doesn't mean they don't deserve to find someone. But um, I question why the same logic is not used toward me. When you have people who come on here and say, you can't get with anyone because you are ugly. You know, it's like, you, you can't have the the benefit of the doubt, the acceptance that, you know, not all men view all women to be attractive, but then not have the reverse be taken into effect. It's, it's simply what I was trying to convey to her. But again, that, that, would, that fell on deaf ears. Um, and again, it's, it's really pathetic that I even have to, because her own life is similar to the, uh, you know, the, the guideline that I, well, the exception is, She's one of these people that puts things off forever. Like she actually believes that we're all just going to live to be 70 and 80 so we can sit around and never get to things. So, oh, I want to I want to have a family. I guess I can I'll just wait until 2030 because, you know, perfect chick will come around and then I'll suddenly just fall in love and, you know, everything will work out. And we can just pretend the last 20 years of getting turned down over and over didn't happen. <laughs> Like she's stupid enough to actually think that. And I know that because she asked me what I wanted to do with my life and all this stuff. And I said it very clearly. Um, and she claimed that one of the things she wanted to do was have kids. And I said, well, you know, I didn't say this to her, but I thought to myself, you're what, almost 30. <laughs> like, well, you know, when exactly is this supposed to occur? <laughs> um, but again, you know, that that's just people, you know, being idiots. They, they think they have all the time in the world to do things. And those of us who actually live in the real world of daily mass shootings know that's anything but the case. So when we have this uh, meeting in May, it's basically me saying, look, I'm tired of this computer stuff. This is going nowhere. Uh, we live in the same state. So let's, let's do this. And I got to say, it was pretty underwhelming. This clown when she saw me, um, almost seemed to, have to vomit when I put my hand off her to shake it and, you know, stuck a cigarette in her mouth, smoked all in my face. And <laughs> I thought to myself, 
of all the chicks I would meet in person, the only two uh, I would of all chicks I would talk to online, the only two that would meet me in person are a gold digger, referring to the only girlfriend I ever had, and a broad who has no romantic interest in me whatsoever. What 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 a what an experience. <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I don't approach anymore. But what I, I think is so comedic about that was, and this is why I said a lot of times when I talk uh, negatively about some experience, I've had it's very hard for me to sit there and say, oh, man, I wish I hadn't have done this because I'm glad I stuck to my gun. Again, hypothetical, not that I actually own firearms, but and I, when I say stuck to my gun, I, I mean... Uh, stayed to my conviction that this was not going to go anywhere if uh, we did not see each other in person. I've, I've seen people, detractors of mine who have said, when you meet someone in person, it's a lot different because you're not doing the computer thing. And they're not scripted. Blah, blah, blah. So I determined that if we met in person and it didn't seem to be anything but platonic, I was basically going to burn the interaction to the ground. Um, because I had now reached the high point of what I wanted from her. And what I mean by that is because a lot of times chicks live in different states, different countries in the most extreme cases, it's very hard to uh, go see one of them in person. You know, you can't just say, oh, you live in, I don't know, Florida. I live in California. Let's go meet each other in Texas. You know, that that doesn't happen. So I took this rare opportunity, one of them being in the same state, and I said, if there is any chemistry there that cannot be conveyed over the phone, it has to be something where you meet the person in person. But again, nothing happened. It was, I was, it was treated like a completely platonic thing that just would go nowhere. And I, you know, I, I said before, I don't like being friend zoned. I uh, actually, when I was weighing whether I should do the documentary on her or the one on the uh the, the one that was the, the other one who came on my page and said i find you physically and um intellectually and comedically attractive <laughs> but i still have no attraction to you you know i i, I debated if it was going to be this clown or the other crazy person but i'll, I'll leave that one for the new year because they did come very late in the year so i basically um decide because we the, the interaction doesn't even last two months after that i say i'm going to take this thing and i'm going to just cut it off i'm not going to cut off i just send a message and say oh goodbye this is the end no, no, no. i'm gonna i'm gonna give her the same ridiculous want to rip your hair out experience that i've gotten with people who uh i've suspected of you know going out of their way to make things not work <laughs> Excuse me. And I also realized that's actually too much credit because when I say I, I've suspected, um, we're talking about chicks who literally will a couple of days later after saying, I can't wait to speak to you <laughs> by voice or whatever, go, oh, I'm not interested anymore. Goodbye forever. Uh, we had one who would barely answer her phone and then she committed to speaking to me more often. And then uh, roughly two, three, four weeks later, after giving me her number, I'm not interested in talking to you because I don't want a pre-relationship win. So, you know, this is something that they, they do all the time. And I said, I'm going to do this to her where we're going to take every little critique or, or criticism she has. And we're, we're basically just not going to care anymore. It's pretty much what I, what I determined. Um, at one point, she cancels a call on me. And I also want to clarify this because it, you got to understand my psychology. I don't generally have um, a lot of phone calls that are with non-relatives just throughout the days. Uh, I mentioned my best friend, you know, is in school and works and all that. So it's not, it's not rare that we get to just speak to each other on the phone for some prolonged period. Even when we schedule one, it usually doesn't end up happening. So uh, when she and I would schedule calls, it would actually be something I was excited for. I would say, oh man, tomorrow we get to speak, woohoo. And a lot of times, roughly an hour, 30 minutes before doing it. Hey, um, how you doing? Uh, well, you know, see, uh, I can't speak to you today, so maybe we can talk tomorrow. And I'd go, oh, whatever. Fine, I guess. Uh, and then an hour, 
two hours, 30 minutes before the next day. Hey, um, well, you know, I kind of have things that are coming up. So can we possibly talk at some other? T-? And I would say, well, okay, you know, fine. What, when do you want to do this? Oh, next this weekend. You wait a couple more days. I'm serious. She actually did this where she just kept canceling on top and understand the issue here. I don't, I couldn't care less if someone says a day before, Hey, I can't do this. I'm sorry, whatever. Cause I didn't, you know, it, that for me on a psychological level is a lot different from, Oh, let's talk tomorrow. Oh, okay. 20 minutes or before the call. Hey, uh, yeah, I can't do it because I, I would literally get excited to, to speak, you know, just, it would be the highlight of my day. At least from the standpoint of what I was, you know what I mean? Like when, when you look for it, it's like, uh, imagine you like a show and you know the new episode is this upcoming Friday. And then right before the episode comes out, they announce, hey, we're not going to, we're not airing that. Yeah, that 20 minutes, 30 minutes before you got your popcorn ready, your VCR, if you still even have one of those. <laughs> it's the same kind of thing where it's not the fact that it was canceled. It's because it was right before, like it was so close and then, you know, gotten rid of. So I think that might explain it. It's not it being canceled. It's how close it is. Um, she complained about the fact that I would say, hey, can you not do this at the start of a call? <sighs> and I know that might sound a little confusing. So most of our calls would end would be ended by her. Oh, I have to go do something, whatever. So to make sure that my point was not missed or not gone into because, you know, this is one of those Babylon people just, you know, for, for an hour or whatever. Um, I would say at the start of the call, Hey, can, uh, you know, can you do this? Can we do that? Can you not do this? And she, she took issue. She didn't take issue with me critiquing something she did. She took issue with the fact that I would say it at the beginning of the call. Like, and I even made this joke, do I have to wait 10 minutes in? Do I have to like have a little, a little stopwatch by me? I mean, how the hell am I supposed to know that the call is even going to be a certain length? <laughs> and look, this is someone who I once had a call with that was maybe 10 minutes. Another one was, it was four hours, an hour, you know, just they're all over the place. So I can't reasonably predict when they're going in, which is why I decided I would say what my issue was if I had one at the start of the thing. And I've, I've never seen someone, if someone says, I don't like you doing this, they just say, they don't like you doing it. I've never seen someone say, uh, well, this was at the start of the call or this was at the beginning. And that, that, that bothered me so much. It shook me to my core. And she didn't say those exact words, but she did complain about its placement in the call. And it was just such a weird, like this is someone who complained about rigid schedules and you're saying something as rigid as whining about the start of the call being used by me to specify what my issue with you is. God, chicks are such, a lot of them are hypocrites or just for stuff like that. Um, I caught myself there. I almost said something that would have been seen as sexist in general, but I specified it's like, it, there's some of them that do that. Um, one of our last calls and I, I didn't, um, uh, my best friend was actually at my house during it. He was, uh, we were having some discussion and she decided to call me during it. Or I think we had scheduled beforehand to speak and he just kind of abruptly announced he was coming over. Uh, <laughs> she was, I think, I don't remember what the, what started, but I said to her, these are my exact same words. These are my exact words. I wouldn't date you if you were the last person on earth and I would rather uh, swallow cyanide tablets, which are those like suicide pills. And she got so upset. She made, did some kind of swear word screaming type thing. <laughs> it was, it was really funny because I had to, I asked her, you know, if, if uh, I have them, am of no romantic interest to you, why do you care? I mean, if I have some 300 pound chick that I think is not intelligent or comedic, just has no redeeming qualities to me whatsoever, right? And they go up and they say, I would never date you. And I would rather drink ble bleach. I wouldn't care because I don't have any attraction to that person. Same thing if a man came up and said that he wasn't, he would rather do that. It wouldn't matter. <laughs> you know, um, but, you know, she really had a hard time 
understanding my point. Well, uh, I think certain things are mean regardless, whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think what other interesting things happened. But yeah, I called her some some mean terms during that period. I didn't care anymore. Bimbo, all the little other stuff. Um, and also just understand this is usually after she's done something to make me upset. And it just kind of became a thing of just you say whatever you want now because it doesn't matter. And she'll continue to deny this if I were to get in contact with her again. But I am firmly convinced based off of, I mean, in all these calls, she she laughed. She claimed that I was so smart, all that stuff, right? But never once in the entire, because she, she was one of these clowns that's really quick to put out compliments. And I told you, I don't, I don't like to compliment chicks because all it usually does is boost their ego or show that they can't do the same thing. Um, in the months and months of us speaking to each other, I noticed she never once complimented me on my physical appearance. Not once. She could very quickly say, oh, I think you're so smart. Oh, I think you know a lot about politics. But not a single time did she ever say, not even I think you're hot, just I, I like the way you look or just nothing. Not a word, complete silence on an issue. But I'm supposed to believe she wasn't shallow, that you know she cares so much about her. And, and here's what kills me, right? And this also should prove to you that she was never with anyone that little... I'm in a long-term relationship thing was, uh, was BS. She described going on Tinder for dates. Now you already know, I think Tinder is a waste of time website along with most of the other dating websites, just people that were horny that are trying to hook up. And she told me, which well, I was only on there for like two weeks. I, I was done with them very quickly. She told me that when she was on here, she had two or three different guys compliment her attractiveness and then ask her weird sexual stuff. Some guy who said, and she even mentioned this when we met each other in person. Oh, uh, you're so beautiful. Do you do anal? And and if you heard her tone of voice and the way she described her reaction, it was like this disgust. Like, how could they ask me this? But, you know, like you're the same person who never once indicated to a man that you had no problem telling was uh, smart and funny that you thought he was physically attractive. So, it, you know, it, I guess what I'm saying is if you listen to her on other, when she described going out and trying to have these little romantic uh, encounters, right? She, she just like a lot of other people tried to make looks seem like they're not the bread and butter of attraction. And I, I, I don't believe it. Because for a person who was as quick to say, you are physically attracted, you are, excuse me, you are smart or funny, you never once heard her say you're hot, you look not, none of that. It was, it was the, it was the, the one compliment she, she just never could eject. And, and that's supposed to be just a coincidence. Told you dating is based on fraud. It's a group of people, referring to these chicks, who try to go out to you and sell you something that they're actually not. This person wanted you to believe she was someone who cared so much and so strongly about a man who was interesting, and could think about current events, and she was so concerned with these events. And she was also very much into uh, comedy. And you know, when you get on the phone with her, she wants you to make her laugh and all. But when she gets someone who does those things, who doesn't ask her about any of this sexual crap at all. She treats him like any other, uh, you know, person that she wants to just be platonic with forever. And I even told her, I don't want to be called your friend. I don't want to be called your, but none of that stuff, because it is code word for this is the furthest this man will ever get with me. And he can sit by and be on the bleachers in the friend zone while all these other dudes get approached and spoken to by me. And I said before, I truly believe she's another one of these people. And this is something you're going to see with a lot of chicks um, who claim that because I like it when they're up front. They say, hey, I don't find you attractive. All right. But, uh, and they specify, I, don't find, I think you're ugly. Oh. Completely agree, uh, accept and agree with that assessment. Thank you for saying it. 
she's another one of these people who will verbally say that she is so concerned with the personality and the the uh, you know the, per, the the various character traits of the person that she's involved with, right? But in reality, she's just another one of these clowns that gets t- turned on when they see some guy that makes them wet. And then they adapt their liking based off of the way the guy looks. So if she sees some person that she thinks is ugly that can make her laugh and that's really into, I don't know, uh, current events like she was. And then she sees some guy that, you know, that has a six pack and some face that makes her jizz all over herself. And he can barely form two sentences, doesn't have a vehicle you know, just nothing except his appearance, right? She'll go for that second person. And I wish people would be more honest about the fact that they're shallow. I said before, there are certain chicks who I think are funny or intelligent, but I just don't find them physically attractive. So nothing's going to happen. But if I can go out and approach 90 plus chicks that I think satisfy uh, my romantic interest, that should show I'm very, my my uh, limits on what someone can look like is not that big. So here lies the story of the Lady Lack and Logic, a very frustrating person to talk to who uh, championed issues like claiming that once you hit a certain magic age, a special woman will appear. It'll be like Aladdin (laughs) out 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 of some space or corner. Um, that she was, you know, the, the, another, the other false claim of liking someone for who they are versus, uh, and oh, and also let's not forget creating fake boyfriends to try and dissuade people who, who haven't, who hadn't even approached them uh, in an effort to get them to not say anything about romance. And then being so dumb, you can't even keep up the charade. I'm telling you that that boyfriend of hers disappeared. That guy did was just like Jimmy Hoffa. We mentioned him a lot, but <laughs> I should have asked her if he was a teamster. This uh, imaginary boyfriend of hers that never got mentioned after that one week. Talked to this broad for six or seven more months. That dude never. Oh, by the way, I just remembered. Um, so when we had our last phone call, she tried to get upset that I was saying, I don't want to talk to her anymore. And I asked her point blank, what, what can you give me? Couldn't answer because she's another empty suit. But my favorite part was when I asked her if she wanted to go on a date, because like I said, the whole point of talking to her was attractive chick, no romantic, uh, no outward romantic interest. Don't, you know. I, I broke my code because I knew that was the last phone call I was going to have with her. And instead of just saying no, which is what she ultimately did say, she has this weird, uh, drawn out, almost two minute answer. Where she's like, well, considering the vitriol and the uh, way in which you spoke to me. After that, she finally says no again. It's following some never-ending sentence. And I said, lady, you were you would have said the exact same thing if I asked you eight months ago. <laughs> but I love these people, man. They got they have to keep up the charade all the way to the end. So listen, um, if you ever meet anyone like the lady like in logic, um, just keep these things in mind. If you want to quit it with this person earlier than 10 months or nine or whatever the amount was. I don't blame you if you want to keep talking to him because you think you might be that man who breaks the cycle. Hey, that's fine. But like I said, I'm not like her. I don't try to tell people uh, that they're going to have a partner if they just wait X number of days. And I don't try to tell them that they won't have someone if they keep going out there. I just share my experiences and you do with them with what you wish. So that's one less um, time wasting piece of garbage. Uh, And I'm glad to be rid of her.